It's a beautiful night here in New York City. I'm headed to the production studio. We got a lot to cover today. Hello and welcome back to Profile Piece. Today we're going to be talking about the golden boy of YouTube himself, Casey Neistat. Now, first of all, I know some of you are thinking, Profile Piece, aren't you just ripping off of Content Cop? Well, unlike Content Cop, I'm not just here to bash someone for their shitty content. Instead, I'm more interested in analyzing the person behind the content and taking a look at all the good and bad that comes with it. In this piece, I'm going to go over how Casey Neistat got so popular making videos, where he got his start, if he sold out, and why he may not be as genuine as you think. Before his incredible YouTube success, before working for CNN, Casey Neistat was a high school dropout living in a trailer park with dreams to become a filmmaker. He moved to New York and his first successful film came out on the internet in 2003, way before YouTube even existed. A video he made about the iPod's battery replacement problems became the equivalent of viral back then, with national news outlets reporting on the story. Casey, started with you. You know, I got the first iPod generation one. After making more independent projects that he filmed with his brother Van, Casey finally got a deal for making an HBO show titled The Neistat Brothers. It was an eight episode series about the brothers' lives and it was met with critical praise. Casey's next TV show, however, was not a success. We're right here beside you. We're really not that different from you. Just a little better look at Anyways, after all that, Casey started making short films for YouTube in 2010. Compared to most other videos at the time and even today, these were well-made pieces on interesting stories with high production value and effort put into each one. Some of his better known earlier videos were about when to use an emergency brake on a subway and the story behind that, an experiment in which he saw what percentage of people nexted him on chat roulette, and perhaps most famous of all, another video which saw huge media coverage and success, a piece about how ineffective bike lanes in New York were as tested by Casey himself. So I got a ticket for not riding the bike lane, but often there are obstructions that keep you from properly riding in the bike lane. With his bold approach to filmmaking on a growing platform, Casey naturally found himself a large audience that continued to grow his channel for years. Things really started taking off in March 2015 when Casey announced that he would be doing daily vlogs, and he did, every single day for over a year and a half. Neistat did what no other YouTuber was doing at the time. He made high quality vlogs consistently and viewers absolutely loved it. To give you an idea of how much success this brought him, before March 2015, Casey had only 600,000 subs. And after his last daily vlog in November 2016, he had amassed a total of 5.6 million subs. While Casey has stopped his strict commitment to daily vlogs, he still makes vlogs and other projects fairly often, getting millions of views per video and growing his audience. During all this time, Casey also made a company on the side called Beam. It was sort of meant to be an alternative to Snapchat, but it didn't end up doing so well. However, following the incredible success of Casey's channel, CNN decided to buy out his company, Beam, for a whopping $25 million. So now Casey works with CNN in addition to making YouTube videos. On top of that, Casey has been working with huge companies like Google, Nike, and Samsung in the form of sponsored content and promotional videos. And this all makes sense because not only is Casey popular, he's also not very controversial. He's a clean-cut, family-friendly, and all-around genuine guy. Or so people think, but we'll get into that later.
What has always made Casey Neistat stand out from every other YouTuber is the artistic style and subject matter he has in almost every one of his videos, of which there are hundreds. Casey Neistat might be the best cinematographer on YouTube, certainly the best of the popular ones. You can compare any one of his vlogs to his competition, and 99% of other vloggers don't even hold a candle to him. Most other big vloggers will have pretty dull and vapid lives, but they try to spice up their videos with forced and scripted content like pranks or cringe humor that appeals to the lowest common denominator of people. Unlike these guys, Casey has it all. He has seamless transitions, amazing drone footage, and he has captivating music that fits the tone of his clips perfectly. But all of those things would just be cheap tricks if not for the fact that Casey also has a genuinely interesting life. He's constantly going on trips, traveling to exotic places, doing interesting things, reviewing cutting-edge new gadgets and technology, and on top of all of this, he's incredibly prolific, having made over 800 videos so far. In fact, I think it's safe to say that most other vloggers making a living today are playing catch up with Casey. They are copying a lot of the techniques and cinematography that Casey initially set the standards for on YouTube. Without a doubt, Casey is a talented filmmaker. He's created some of my favorite videos on YouTube, actually. One in particular, a classic of his called Make It Count, is the perfect example of a well-crafted short film. The video starts with a statement of how Casey was given money to film a promotional video, but instead decided to use that money to travel the world, setting the tone for a sporadic and exciting adventure. And throughout this video, Casey absolutely delivers. He travels to many exotic locations across the world, with upbeat music matching every transition and shot, all while providing some really inspirational quotes that actually fit with what he's doing in the video. Normally, it would seem impossible to travel to all these amazing places in only 10 days, but this video makes the impossible seem possible. It emotionally moved me while impressing me with its artistic approach to an extremely ambitious endeavor. And that's just one example, Casey is always looking to push the boundaries and create something truly inspiring with his content. That's why he's a cut above the rest, and that's why he's so successful. So that was the good, but what about the bad? Hillary Clinton. I will be voting for Hillary Clinton. By far, the biggest mistake in Casey's YouTube career was a video he made called Who I'm Voting for President, which he released on October 11th, 2016, at the height of the US election cycle. More importantly, she's mentally sound, she's responsible, and she's sane. This is about a megalomaniac who's driven by nothing but ego. A man who cares exactly zero. So if your favorite YouTuber says things like, I don't like to talk politics on my channel, or I'm not gonna reveal who I'm voting for, call them out. Sitting on the sidelines this time around is not okay. This election is different. And if this guy gets elected, and you stood back with your arms folded and didn't speak out against him, it makes you complicit. It makes you partially responsible for handing him the reins of power. So first, Casey posits the claim that Trump is an insane, racist egomaniac. Then he claims that by not openly supporting Hillary, other YouTubers are complicit and responsible for allowing this insane racist to win. What I found strange about this whole situation was that at no point before or after this video was Casey ever as serious about his support for Hillary on his YouTube channel. In fact, when Trump won, Casey actually congratulated him and claimed he won fair and square. A complete 180 to the attitude he seemed to have in the other video. Trump won. I just wanted to address that, first of all. I know a lot of my viewers are Trump supporters, so congratulations. Uh, I entirely respect the outcome of the election. Trump won fair and square. Aside from that, Casey and his brother Van have had a bit of history with Hillary Clinton. 
I also, I think, want to thank uh, Casey and Van Neistat. Hillary Clinton thanked Casey for a film him and his brother made years ago as they were making a name for themselves. An article from The Day in 2005 states, Their first big break was putting together a short happy birthday film about Clinton administration member Fred Hochberg. The brothers were hired to create a candid video with comments by Hochberg's friends, including former President Clinton. Not only that, but the article also quotes Casey's brother saying, If Hillary Clinton's personal assistant calls, we don't pick up. If Hillary calls, we'll talk to her. On top of all of that, Casey has a long history with the DNC, even going as far as making calls and getting voters for Obama's 2008 campaign. Casey even made a video about this. In an interview with Philip DeFranco, Casey claimed he is completely transparent with his sponsorships. And, and I'm always like, I try to be as transparent as possible, yeah. you know, it's like... But it seems with the Clinton video, we got the exact opposite, as there is clearly a long and illustrious past that Casey has had with the DNC, as well as Hillary Hillary Clinton herself that he didn't disclose to his audience. And remember that whole part about shaming other YouTubers into joining his promotion of Hillary? Well, things start to get really weird when you put together this incident that happened around the same time to Philip DeFranco. God, how do I say this without uh, a completely unrelated thing that I'm going to talk about right now? Imagine this guy, we'll call him YouTuber A. He really wants to be included in this annual video called BoobTube Behind. But it turns out that the company that is running BoobTube Behind is also the same company that maybe, hypothetically, asked YouTuber A to make a video to support a specific candidate in a mesidential memection. <laughs> and YouTuber A kind of shit all over that idea. Maybe, theoretically, that is connected to the reason why he won't be a part of BoobTube Mihai. So basically, Philip DeFranco just let us know that there was a clear effort to get YouTubers to promote Hillary, and for not doing so, he was punished. It's entirely possible that this is the exact situation Casey Neistat found himself in, and that's why he wasn't being totally transparent, because he was told to make it look genuine. Later on in that same interview with DeFranco, Casey admits that he made a huge mistake with the Clinton video, and he even goes on to make some comments defending Trump in a pretty reasonable way. When it came to the election of 2016, we had two bad options. I think that, that video was a gross misstep. And look, at the end of the day, do I think that Hillary Clinton would have made a better president than not? I don't know. And I think that the Democrats are probably doing a worse job right now than the Republicans. I don't think that Donald Trump is the reason why we're having all these problems. I think that he is, he's merely a symptom of our completely fucked political system. Is Casey being genuine here? Are these his real opinions? Because it didn't at all seem like he thought Hillary was a bad candidate in his video. At this point, I don't know what to believe anymore. Casey was clearly withholding a lot of damning information regarding his connections with Clinton in his video about her. And even though he admitted it was a mistake, I don't know when he's being genuine, when he's being sponsored, or when he has ulterior motives after that whole debacle. Casey is also known for reviewing the most lavish and luxurious first-class flights, oftentimes on Fly Emirates planes, one of the most expensive airlines out there. Casey has been open with the fact that he has been given free upgrades on these flights before. Obviously, he doesn't pay for any of these ridiculously expensive $21,000 flights. That being said, this Twitter exchange between Casey Neistat and Fly Emirates gives even further insight into his connections with Emirates. Dear Emirates, you got my number. Let's make this happen. XO Casey. It seems like Casey has a pretty close connection with Emirates. They even have his number, apparently. And lo and behold, one month after this tweet, Casey got the exact first class experience he asked for. That's right, at the snap of his finger, Casey gets upgraded to the most expensive flight possible. And of course, in his video, he praises the experience and explains how wonderful it was. God, it really was all it was cracked up to be. It was everything I ever wanted. Clearly, there is a conflict of interest here because if Casey has Emirates in his back pocket giving him all the free flights he wants, then he's not going to give them a bad review or explain how they might be overpriced for normal people. These videos aren't so much reviews as they are promotions or showcases for these flights. When he's given such a gracious upgrade for free, Neistat won't feel any pressure to actually criticize the airline. And Emirates knows that he's going to give them free promotion in each of these videos, so it's sort of a quid pro quo relationship. 
Speaking of shady airline practices, you might recall a story that blew up over social media in April 2017, in which a man was thrown off of an overbooked United flight. Well, Casey flies a lot and almost always included footage from these flights, especially when he was doing his daily vlogs. He just so happened to be flying a couple days after news of this incident broke, and he just so happens to have already booked a United flight. In his video, Neistat talked about the incident and claimed that he would be boycotting Caught in United until the situation was resolved. I don't think I can fly United anymore until they make that situation right. A few days and a few vlogs later, on April 14th, 2017, Casey flew from New York to LA. His departing flight was with American Airlines. I know this because if you slow down this section of his vlog, you can see the American Airlines logo on the boarding sign of his flight. However, what's peculiar is that there is no footage of his return flight from LA to New York just a few days later. Now, why would he exclude this footage? Well, I have my own theory as to why. It seems highly likely that Casey booked his flight from LA to New York with United in advance, and he didn't show any footage of the return flight because it was with United, who he had previously said he would be boycotting and not flying anymore. Casey knew that if he was truly dedicated to this boycott, he would have canceled the return flight with United. Sure, for a normal person, that would be a bit of an expense to change your return flight, but for Casey Neistat, a few hundred dollars here or there is no problem. If Casey would have had the conviction to stand by his principles, he would have changed the flight, but he didn't. The only thing that could exonerate him would be the footage from that return flight but it's gone. There is no reference to that flight anywhere. No tweet about it, no Instagram post, nothing. So I have one question for you, Casey Neistat, the man who vlogs every flight, who records every experience of his life. Where is the footage? Where is it, Casey? Because it's not on April 16th, 2017, and it's not on April 18th, 2017. Where is the footage from your return flight from LA to New York on April 17th, 2017? We, the viewers, demand the truth. Otherwise, you've been exposed as a disingenuous liar. So I'm gonna ask you one more time, Casey Neistat. Where is the footage? <laughs> Despite his faults and potential lack of integrity at times, all in all, Casey Neistat is a really inspiring creator. Truth be told, I do admire him. Sure, he may have been disingenuous in the past, but while we're on the topic of transparency, I have something to disclose myself. You see, while making this video, I tweeted at Casey a couple times, jokingly asking for an interview, not at all expecting a response. I just did it as a joke, mainly because compared to him, I'm a nobody on YouTube. Well, to my shock, Casey actually did see my tweets and took the time to directly message me. Not only that, but he expressed interest in doing the interview with me after I was clearly making fun of him and being an asshole. By that point, though, it was sort of too late and a bit awkward since I had already filmed most of the video and an interview wouldn't really fit with all the criticism and caveman jokes. But hey, I would love to do an interview with him one day, maybe tie up all the loose ends and the lingering questions I have if he doesn't hate me after this video. Because I genuinely enjoy a lot of his content. Hell, I've even showed his video, Make It Count, to so many family members and friends because I've been so inspired by it. It really is one of my favorite videos on YouTube. The message is so motivational and it's a great summation of Casey's career as a whole. He travels the world in 10 days, doesn't plan anything, ends up in the most amazing places. It's filled with those inspirational quotes. That song fits so well and the anticipation builds to a halt as he's about to jump from what must be a 50 foot tall cliff into this giant pool of water. It is at this moment 
moment that the scene pauses for suspense and reflection, which makes it extremely emotional and moving. But in that same moment, I think about the Clinton video he made, and it makes me want to jump as well. Into a pit of spikes. Following the incredible success of Casey's channel, CNN bought out his company Beam for a whopping $25 million. Uh. 